Right, so Azusa's tagline is In Search of the Incredible. Yeah, nah, I think they found it. They found incredible. Wolf. Wolf. So yes, Talio their champs, and I'm going to slam this thing. I'm going to see its thermal capacity, watt capacity, heat capacity. Stay tuned to the end of the video to see all that. Let's have a first look at this thing and wolf. This thing is wow, this is amazing. Azus are in search of the incredible, while well, they have definitely found it here. And my hat's off to Azus. Whoa, did you hear that? That was it. <laughs> no one is innovating like Azus. I mean, screens in trackpads, you know, numpads in trackpads dual screen displays, liquid metal out of the factory. Now this is the ROG Zephyrus Duo 15. So this is the first time they've had, you know, dual screen on the Zephyrus. They had it in the Zenbook Pro Duo. So first let's unbox it, have a look. So we'll unbox it here. I'll just talk a little bit about it while I unbox it. The reference number of GX5050L. That's the model number or reference number, whatever you want to call it. So have a listen to this. 300 hertz display, three millisecond response, G-Sync, Pro Art True Color technology. So calibrated display, active aerodynamic cooling system, liquid metal at the factory. And this is the next big thing, right? People are going to start doing this. Zeus at a first, like at the factory. Uh, you know, maybe there's one other ones that does it, but you know, at the mainstream, Zeus. 90 watt hour battery, so a big battery. It is thin and light. I'll give you the tip. 65 watt charging through the Thunderbolt. So it does have Thunderbolt 3, so awesome, you know. Some of the Asus gaming laptops didn't have it last generation. This one does, so that is great. And you can charge 65 watts through there. Wi-Fi 6, of course, dual screen, no premium build magnesium. So yeah, I gotta say, I'm very impressed with the packaging, the box, the whole system it just looks like a concept gone into production and that's what it looks like that's what it feels like you wouldn't think you'd be able to mass produce something like this but they're nuts and they can do it the other laptops they've had with two screens i haven't heard anything about you know durability issues with those so only a zeus can put these sort of prototype looking things into production amazing innovation they are the kings at the moment you know you have a look at the g14 and just they're innovating they're disrupting and and I just have to tip my hat to them. Of course, inside that beautiful box, you have the beast unit itself. And I've got to say, the build quality is absolutely superb. It feels expensive. It looks expensive. And check out the description. Latest prices there. And I really like the feel of it. It feels like a sort of matte sort of finish there. It's nice grey. It's elegant. It, you know, even though it does have the ROG flavour, sort of, you know, that sort of gaming theme, it still looks stylish clean modern it just looks good you know i think only alienware whoa there it goes again <laughs> i think only alienware and azus sort of get away with this sort of thing but i think this is very clean and understated for an rog laptop so yeah for the io we got ethernet we got usb type a's you know hdmi we have thunderbolt as i was saying before so that's awesome audio in and out amazing 230 watt package but of course the main show is that dual display so as I said before, 300 hertz, four millisecond response, matte G-Sync 1080p main display, and it does look good for what it's worth. I mean, G-Sync, come on. And a 1920 by 550 resolution secondary display. And of course, this is gonna help, like if you're streaming, you know, your video editing and stuff like that, two screens is better than one. Anyone that has multiple monitor setups will tell you that it's hard to go back to one screen when you use two screens. And there's no other laptop like this, is there? It looks like it's brighter than the previous version. And because it tilts up, you can actually see it. Where the problem with the older version was it was laying flat. Now it tilts up. You can see it properly. So that just makes it even better. And it's a touch display. So that is awesome. So you could say it's like a useful touch bar on steroids. That's a second screen and woof, it is awesome. All right, so now let's get stuck into it. Now let's slam this thing and see if I can kill it. And yes, it does come with an RTX 2080 Max-Q, this one I have here, and an i9-10980HK. Unlocked too. I can actually undervolt it. 
So what you're looking at now, I'm going to slam the CPU, see how fast it is stock, see what sort of thermals it's getting, how much watts it's outputting. Then we're going to slam the GPU, see how much watts that's outputting and the temperature. Then I'm going to slam both together to see the total system output, what's the maximum watts this can output and of course the temperature's there as well. And then as a bonus, I'm going to undervolt it, minus 100 millivolts and just slam that CPU to see how much faster it is with that undervolt. Now with undervolts, I don't really like to do them that much. I've sort of been thinking about that because it's per chip basis. I don't want to mislead people. I've got a minus 100 millivolt, you know, undervolt and look at the thermals. It's amazing. The performance is amazing. And then you get it and yeah, your chip isn't that good. And just keep things stock. We know where we sit here, but you can see it under again, but you'll see it undervolted at the end. So what I can tell you is after the boost is over, I unlocked the power. I didn't undervolt it. But after the boosts are over, you get about 90, 95 watts with the CPU. With the GPU, you're looking at about 90 watts on the GPU. So make sure you watch so you can see. All the telemetry is here. Combined, we're getting at the end of Cinebench, the CPU will go down to 45 watts and you're pushing 90 watts on the GPU. So that's 135 watts. That is quite amazing in such a thin and light package. It really is thin and light, easy to handle. It's just, yeah, it's not a thick, beefy gaming laptop, and that's very good in my books. So I guess as you can see, with Cinebench, you're getting, you know, 3.8 stock. And yeah, when you run the CPU and GPU together, you take, you know, a thousand point haircut, lighten up the CPU and GPU together. That's sort of what you'd expect because, you know, the CPU has to go down to 45 watts. Such a thin light package that's going to happen. But that's what you want in gaming. You want that CPU to stay at least 45 watts and give the GPU that full 90 watts. And yeah, that's all you can ask for in such a thin light package. So everything checks out there. And the fact that you can undervolt it, you'll even get more out of it. Because, you know, 45 watts undervolted means more performance per watt, give you more frequency, you know, better performance. So I do think the i9 will be worth it. If you can get it, it's hard to get i9s. And I'm not sure if other versions, you know, that may have different sort of CPUs, like in their other range, will be able to be undervolted. So I love this thing already. It's just amazing. You know it's going to perform well. You know, 45 watts CPU, 90 watts GPU, that's all you can ask. And temperatures, yeah, of course, when it boosts up, it gets hot, it'll get to 100, whatever, that's fine. But once it gets into its settled state, you know, CPUs in the 80s, GPU is nothing even to worry about. So anyway, catch you next one, guys. Stay tuned for more on this. Tally ho.